Ember's Reading Room is about children's books from an adult perspective. And part of having adult perspective is knowing when your view might be slightly askew. We looked at the special unicorn right after reading The Unicorn with No Horn. Taken as a direct sequel, it does not work well. As a standalone book, it works much better, but as we were reading it as a direct sequel, things got a little overly negative this time. Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we are looking at the third of three books that have the same illustrator. This book is the sequel to The Unicorn Who Had No Horn. This one is entitled The Special Unicorn, written by Margaret Holland, same as last time, but Margaret picked up a new co-author, Isaacson Bright. The last one was co-authored by Craig McKee. Once again, illustrated by Tammy Sterner Altop. Let's look at the date on this one and see where it falls. Well, it should fall after the unicorn who had no horn, but does it fall before or after the little lost unicorn? Ooh, after, 1988. Still Willowis Press. That also explains why the young unicorn on the cover looks like the young unicorn on the lost little unicorn. You can see the evolution of the style. Alexandra stood in the magic crystal garden. They have one of those now, apparently. Or apparently she's hanging out in the one that she got her horn from. Apparently. What's wrong, she wondered. The crystals have stopped growing. Her horn still has its sparkles from the last book. Shiny. Alexandra looked around the garden. Everything in the garden was magic. The crystals, the flowers, the clear bottomless pool. Even the rocks were magic. Crystals are a form of rocks. Also, how do you know the pool is bottomless? The flowers look better. I like the way they're illustrated in this book. The other ones are pretty nice, but I'm also mostly referring to the ones from the lost, the little lost unicorn. Mm -hmm. I need more crystals to deliver to the children of the world, thought Alexandra. What the? Yeah, that just kind of came out of <laughs> nowhere. Because where Alexandra and other, all the other unicorns were, there were no crystals. There were no signs of any crystals in the last book until we got to the Crystal Valley. Yeah, and that was like a special place. Well, this still sounds special because everything in the garden is magic. The crystals hold the magic that helps children remember their dreams. Of unicorns and all that is magical and special. And now the crystals have stopped growing. The next day, Alexandra greeted the new young unicorns. They had arrived in the garden for their season of work with the crystals. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, this, um, continuity, let's just take that concept, and you see that window over there? Yeah, we're just gonna toss it out the window. Yeah, because so far the only thing this book has in common with the last book is one author, one illustrator, and the name Alexandra. Yeah, and the fact that she apparently still has a crystal horn because of how shiny it is. Well, if you look there, it does look slightly translucent. Yep. Maybe, hoped Alexandra, there will be one special unicorn who can help the crystals grow again. Let's take our concept. Maybe hammer it in a couple of times. Maybe then it will stick. You know, because little kids don't pay attention. Alexandra looked at the young unicorns. One tossed her mane, another pawed the ground. Alexandra looked past two others to Rosie. Rosie was just a bit smaller than the rest, with only a nubby bump where her horn would be. She had bright eyes and a bright rosy pink coat. And she stands like an anime protagonist. Look! Look at his hair! Yes. Come, Alexandra called to all the new unicorns. Come work in the garden. So not everyone has their horns yet. So we were told Rosie had a knobby bump where her horn would be. We have at least three other young unicorns shown with shorter horns. And then two that are like Rosie. So she's not going to be in trouble for not having a horn. She's going to be in trouble for being pink. <laughs> because every other unicorn is gray. Yep. Like I said, she stands out like an anime protagonist. No kidding. Hey, we get the returning of the flying unicorns. Unless it describes leaping. Sans wings. As the days passed, Alexandra watched the young unicorns work. Some complained that their shiny hooves got dirty. 
Some were careless and chipped the points on the crystals. On the hottest days, some even flew off to play in the clouds. Yep, that concept's back. It's like they took concepts from the first one and went, let's see what we can do. Because I'm okay with the concepts in this book. It's just they're coming out of nowhere compared to the other book. But one of the new unicorns loved the crystal garden. She talked to the flowers and sang to the crystals. I wonder which one that could be. It was Rosie. Oh, I'm surprised. Alexandra began to hope as she saw the crystals begin to glimmer and sing for the little pink unicorn. I do like the fact that they have illustrated the chipped ones and the ones with dirty hooves and stuff like that. Yeah, see, we, ha we have examples of all of it. Chipped crystals, dirty hooves, unicorns flying off in the clouds. The pink one singing. Well, we don't know for sure that she's singing because there's no musical notes drawn like there were at the end of the last book. Ah. But the other unicorns started to make fun of Rosie. Of course. Here's your predictability card. Why do you talk to the flowers? One asked. Why do you sing to the crystals? Asked another. And why are you pink? Asked a third. I once fell into a vat of cotton candy. It was delicious and terrifying all at the same time. You're different. You're strange, they teased. And as the others flew off, Rosie could hear them still. Different, different, different. Oh, let's just hammer that in. A little more. I know it's supposed to feel sorry for her, but I've seen this handled better. Alexandra, Rosie cried. Why don't they like me? Rosie's head hung low, and her tears fell on the crystals. You're not like the others, Alexandra said. Of all the new ones, only you can hear the crystals sing. You're special. But before Alexandra could finish, Rosie stamped her hooves and cried, I hate being different. And off she flew. Mm, that's actually a pretty accurate reaction. Mm-hmm. Alexandra stood looking at the garden. She watched sadly as the crystals grew dimmer. You're the adult here, Alexandra. Knock some sense into those hooligans. Soon Rosie found the other unicorns playing a new game of Ride the Clouds. I've come to play with you, she called. But as soon as Rosie appeared, the largest unicorn called out, Catch us if you can! And all the other unicorns disappeared into the clouds. It's been previously established that they didn't do a good job. They've now all skipped out on work. Why not dismiss them? Rosie chased after the others, but suddenly she found herself caught in the middle of thick, dark clouds. She was tossed up and down by violent gusts of wind, lightning flash, and the thunder rolled. <laughs> and the lightning strikes. Hopefully not. Yeah. Rosie turned and twisted, trying to escape, but the wind was too strong for her. She was caught in the fierce storm clouds and the other unicorns were nowhere in sight. Jerks. Well, Rosie doesn't have her horn yet, and some of them didn't either, so they can get lost. Rosie struggled in the storm for what seemed like many hours. Finally, a heavy gust of wind knocked her out of the clouds. Rosie landed in a heap in the forest. Ouch. Yes. Rosie was too wet and too tired to fly any further. She doesn't have wings. How does water make you too wet to fly. I mm. mean, I get the whole wing my wings are wet trope, but no wings. Yeah, but she could also um, freeze easier with the water on her as she goes higher up into the atmosphere. All night she walked. Too tired to fly, but you can still walk. Hmm. Well, maybe a different kind of energy for flying. You know, considering they don't have wings. Yeah, which means it should be magic, something out of nothing in children's books. Several times she stumbled and fell. Dirt and leaves stuck to her coat. Branches scratched her. Owls hooted at her. She was cold and lonely and lost. Apparently in this book, owls can't talk. Apparently. Also interesting that all three books had owls. Hmm. The next morning, just as the sun was rising, Rosie finally found her way to the crystal garden. She stood beside the magical pool and looked at the crystals. They seemed as lifeless as she felt. Then something inside of her whispered. Something within her told her what to do. Rosie stood up tall, took a deep breath, and did something no other unicorn had ever done. She dived deep into the bottomless crystal pool. I'd like to reiterate, how does anyone know that it is bottomless? Shh. 
It's kind of like the Force of No Return with secret treasures inside of it. How do you know there's treasures inside of it No, if no one's returned from it? Well, the treasures aren't anywhere else, so they must be there. Hmm. Hmm. Armoire of invincibility. Maybe he wanted the armor of invincibility. Hmm. Yeah. I'm sure he would have said something. Reference. <laughs> <laughs> and back to diving into the bottomless crystal pool. We know unicorns can fly. Can they swim? The cool water around her felt clean and pure, as if by magic, in the garden where everything is magic. Rosie felt her tiredness and loneliness disappear, and then she came to the surface. Rosie climbed out and stood beside the pool. She raised her head to the sun and shook. As she did, drops of water fell to the ground, and each drop became a pure, tiny, sparkling crystal. So unicorn tears cause flowers. Water being shook from a unicorn causes crystals? Apparently. Rosie laughed with delight to see the tiny new crystals. And as she laughed, she felt a tingling, a warm tingling in the middle of her forehead. And when she looked into the pool, she saw that she had a sparkling pink crystal horn. And she didn't have to talk to a crystal and pick it up to get it. Yeah, and... Mouth looks kind of awkward on that drawing. I know she's supposed to be laughing and everything. It looks a lot like the smile that Alexandra has at the end of the first book. Hmm. Rosie looked up and saw Alexandra coming into the garden. Look, cried Rosie. The sunlight shone through her crystal horn, making beautiful beams and twinkles of rainbow light. Why doesn't Alexandra's do that? Hers is also a crystal horn. Hmm. Alexandra smiled as she watched Rosie dance through the crystal garden. Also, wouldn't that get kind of awkward? And what if the light refracted and it got in your eyes? Ah! It's in my eyes! Why the eyes? Who thought of this? The other young unicorns watched in awe as Rosie began to sing to the crystals. Now they watch in awe? Nothing happened with them. Everything's been about Rosie. We have no idea what they were up to. After they disappeared into the clouds. Mm -hmm. So why is now suddenly her singing to the crystals so amazing? Yes, she has her horn, but so do at least three of you. So that's not it. All right. Rosie began to sing to the crystals. You're special. You're special. I'm special too. And the crystals sang back. You're special. We're special. You're special too. I can hear them. I can hear the crystals again. Rosie called out with delight. At what point could Rosie not hear the crystals? Yeah. That was never mentioned. I'm thinking it was supposed to be the part where the crystals are as, as empty as she was. Looked as empty and lifeless as she felt. So. Yeah, I'm thinking that was the part. That was all of two seconds. Oh, I know. I mean, I've been sitting here next to you. And very soon, Rosie flew off with Alexandra. Together they would deliver the pink crystals to the children of the world. The special pink crystals that would help the children realize that each one of them was special too. Yeah. So apparently Alexandra and Rosie are Sandy Claus. I see what you did there. I don't, I don't have any problem with the concept of you're special because everyone's special. We're, we're partly really all unique. Even twins are unique compared to each other. They're just more similar compared to the most people but it's just the, the way this took the concept it just kind of rubbed it in the wrong way also really no continuity between the first book and the second book the only thing tying them together is alexandra i mean the world rules aren't even the same except for the fact that unicorns can fly without wings that's pretty much all it has in common uh, reading those two back to back that's just a huge, kind of like when you take the pilot episode of a series, you know, just the pilot, you know, the one that they pitched to get the deal, and then the rest of the series is nothing like it. Mm-hmm. Was there all those, those great series where you watch the pilot, and then you watch the first episode, and you realize that it's pretty much the pilot, they just edited it themselves, so the rest of the story fits better with it? And you're like, oh, that's the way they do it. Of course, then there's this one, those pilots, like you just said, where you're like, this does not match at all. So they approved this, but then they got this. Oh, well. 
And this has been The Special Unicorn by Margaret Holland and Isaacson Bright, illustrated by Tammy Starner Altop. Thank you for listening. Please check out other entries in Inver's Reading Room and other videos on the Lux Analysis channel. Please also consider subscribing if you haven't already and leaving a friendly comment below. Interested in checking out this book? We'll try to get you an Amazon link if it's still in print. Just feel like going shopping? Check out the Ebates link. Get cash back for shopping when you begin your purchases through their site. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Wow, that sounded like one of those end radio things where they're trying to fit in everything. That was the point. <laughs> I can do that on purpose.